What's up everyone? Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me today. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe so you not miss my next video. So today we're gonna talk about one of the most important, yet the most confusing topic in discrete mathematics. We're gonna be talking about generating functions. So let's start with basic. What is generating function? So the way I understand generating function is a way to encode or a way to present a sequence of numbers. So let's say you have a sequence 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, so all odd numbers. You don't want to write 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. You want to present it in a new way. So one of the ways you can do is you can present it using generating function. You're going to use number in the sequence as coefficient in front of x to the n. And what's cool about generating function is n going to help you keep track of the size of something. Okay, with that in mind, let's jump right to an example. So let's say you have four shirts. They are different. We want to know how many ways can we pick n shirts out of those four shirts. Let's look at n equal to zero mean you pick zero shirt. Well, that's only one way to do it, right? Which is you don't pick anything. If you want to pick one shirt, since you have four shirts, that's four ways because you can pick the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. If you want to pick two shirts, this is a little more complicated, but at the end of the day, there will be six ways to pick two shirts out of four shirts. For three shirts, it looks complicated, but you can think of it as you left out one shirt, right? You have four, you want to pick three. So it's the same as you left out one shirt, too, so you can left out one, two, three, or four. So there are four ways. If you want to pick four shirts, there's only one way because you have to pick all of them. Then if you want to pick five shirts, it's impossible. You cannot pick up five shirts if you have only four shirts. So n equal to five, the number of ways zero, same as n equal to six, seven, so on and so forth. So this is kind of sequence that we want to represent the number of ways to pick n shirts out of four shirts. All right, you can write on the table. For each n, we have a number of ways down below. So here's the point of generating function. I don't like this table. I don't want to present this sequence using a table. I want to use generating function. So here's what we do. We will present this sequence as a formula of x. So what we do is we take those number 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 as coefficient of x to the 0, x to the 1, x to the 2, x to the 3, x to the 4. You can actually extend it to infinity by putting 0 in front of x to the 5, 0 in front of x to the 6, so on and so forth. But in this case, everything else is going to be 0, so you end up with 1 plus 4x plus 6, x squared plus 4x cubed plus x to the 4th. So at first glance, you might be like, what on earth is this? Like, why? What? All of a sudden, you have x, x squared everywhere. Like, what do we do? Um, don't be scared. When you're dealing with generating function, try to convert it back to, into a table. If you see, this formula is nothing but this table. That's basically how you should read it. With that in mind, let's do one more example to make sure we understand what's going on. Alright, so instead of four shirts, let's say we have five socks. But the difference that we're going to do here is those five socks will be identical socks. Mathematically, being identical means if you want to pick one sock out of five, there's only one way because it doesn't matter if you pick the first one, the second one, or the third one, um, you will pick a sock that looks exactly the same. So picking one sock out of five identical socks, there's only one way. All right, so what do we do here? So we're gonna ask the same question. We want to know the number of ways to pick n socks out of five socks. All right, in this case, it's easy. If n equal to zero, you pick zero socks, there's one way. Pick one sock, there's one way. Pick two socks, there's one way. Pick three socks, there's one way. Four socks, one way. Five socks, one way. Six socks, though, zero way, because we have only five socks. There's no way to pick out six socks out of five socks. So the table will look like this. With that, we can write a generating function based on this sequence or this table, which gives you 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth. Alright, so now that you know how to like write down generating function based on sequence, you might wonder like, okay, I understand now, but why? Right? If all we do is just rewrite the table, why don't we just use the table? It's much easier to read, right? Generating function, you have like something scary going on. Well, here's why. So being a polynomial or being something in terms of x, x squared, give you algebraic structure that you can work with. Meaning having two tables, you cannot add tables together. You cannot multiply tables together. But for polynomial, something in terms of x, you can definitely add two generating functions together. You can multiply two generating functions together. And here's the cool part. 
adding to generating function gives you a new generating function that has a meaningful sequence behind it. The same for multiplication. Multiply to generating function gives you a generating function that has a meaningful sequence behind. Let's go over addition first because that's a little easier. So let's say you have two generating function. One count the number of construction one, like picking shirts. Generating function two count the number of construction two, like picking socks. You add them together, you get a new generating function that count the construction of one or two. So let's look at an example. So let's say you have four shirts and five socks in a wardrobe. And you want to ask yourself, how many ways can I pick either in shirts or in socks from the wardrobe? So let's go over a sequence really quickly. Zero item, easy, just one way. One item, pretty easy too. If you want to pick shirt, you either pick shirt, one shirt, two shirt, three shirt, four. Or if you want to pick sock, you pick that one sock. So you're done. Now, picking two items is um, a little confusing, but if you think about it, it's not too bad. If you picking shirt, so you have four shirt, you pick two of them. With all the possible combinations, you would end up with six. Or you pick two socks, which you have five socks, you pick two, but all socks are the same, so it doesn't really matter which two you pick. So there's only one way. So if six plus one gives you seven. All right, so after all the computation, you might get this table, but another way to get this table is basically adding two generating function together. So if you recall, generating function for picking shirt is this guy, generating function for picking sock is this guy. So if you add them together, you get this new generating function, which correspond to the table above. In other words, adding generating function means you do first construction or second construction. So addition has kind of nice and intuitive explanation. However, multiplying generating function is what makes generating function really useful. Multiplying generating function, so again, generating function 1, construction 1, generating function 2, construction 2. Multiplying two generating functions give you a new generating function that explains the number of ways to do construction 1 and construction 2 together but you combine the size. So using the socks and shirt example is kind of like this. Let's say you have four shirts and five socks in your wardrobe and you want to say how many way can I pick n items, mix and match shirt and sock. So I get n items, how many way I can do that. So let's count the number of way carefully. So when n equal to zero, once again, picking zero thing, there's only one way. Picking one thing though, it's the same as addition case, right? Because you can pick one shirt, four cases, pick one sock, one case, so you have five in total. Two is confusing. So picking two items, you can either do two shirts, you can do one shirt and one sock, and you can do two socks. Two shirts, as we've seen before, give you six. One shirt, one sock, well, one shirt, you have four choices. One sock, you have one way, you multiply them together. You have four ways to get one shirt and one sock. Two socks, we have, as we've seen before, socks are identical. Picking two socks out of five socks, there's only one way. So combined together, you have six plus four plus one equal to 11. And we keep doing this for three, four, five, so on and so forth. I think in this case, it go up to nine because now we have five pieces of apparel in our wardrobe, so we can pick nine items. And at the end of the day, if you count it correctly, you get this table. Or if you know a thing or two about generating function, you can just multiply generating function for shirt and generating function for socks together. And then you have generating function to pick shirt and socks together, right? And when you multiply two generating functions out, you get something like this, which tell you how many ways you can get n items if you have four non-identical shirts and five identical socks for all possible n. Like one can ask, how many ways can we get six items? Right, so remember when you look at this generating function, think of this as a table where the power of x tells you the n. So if you want six item, you just look at coefficient in front of x to the six. And the answer in this case will be 15. And in fact, you can do that for all n. Just remember that generating function is just a fancy way to write a table. So with that in mind, let's see a common problem that can be solved using generating functions. So we can ask find the number of non-negative solution to x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 6, where x1 is less than or equal to 4, x2 less than or equal to 3, and x3 less than or equal to 5. Hmm, look at this problem, what should we do? 
Let's think of this problem using analogy of previous example. In this case, let's say we have four identical shirts, three identical pants, and five identical socks. So note that I pick four, three, and five from the upper bound of x1, x2, x3. That's how I would interpret four, three, and five. And the way I would interpret x1, x2, x3 is we're gonna pick x1 shirt, x2 pants, and x3 socks. And that makes sense that x1 should not be more than 4 because we have 4 shirts. There's no way we will pick more than 4 shirts, right? Then put that original problem aside and ask more general problem. We can ask what is the number of way to pick n items from the wardrobe. Okay, and here's a punchline. Picking n items basically means x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to n, right? Because we have x1 shirt, x2 pants, and x3 socks. If we want n items in the total, we have to add them to get n. So as we have seen from the example before, if you want to know generating function for the number of ways to pick three items combined, we can find generating function for each of the items separately and then multiply them. So generating function for picking shirt is easy. It's gonna be one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth. So there's one way to pick zero shirt, one way to pick one, two, three, four. But there's zero way to pick five, six, seven because we have only four shirt. Therefore, we have generating function being like this. The same go to pens. We have 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed because we have only 3 pens. So the power of x go up to 3. But for sock, it's go up to 5 because we have 5 socks. All right, now that we have 3 generating functions for x1, x2, x3, then the number of ways to get them combined to n having generating function being product of these 3 generating function. So all you have to do is just multiply the first generating function to the second generating function to the third generating function, which using some calculator computer gives you this result. All right, with this, you get the full table of the number of ways to get stuff like, so going back to shirt, pants, and sock analogy, if you pick zero item, you look at x to the zero, you get one, one item, you get three, two item, you get six, 12 item, you get one. The original question asked for x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to six, meaning, you pick six items, so you look at x to the six, and the answer would be 18. So that's all I want to talk about today. If you find this video helpful, please leave a like. If you have a question, please leave a comment down below. If you want to know more, stay tuned for generating function part two. But if you like it so much that you want to watch all my videos, please do so and don't forget to subscribe. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. My name is Kuang, you're watching and choose K. Until next time, keep counting. Peace. Thank you.